yes, yes, Windows is finally on the quest. Well, sort of. While I welcome this edition to the Quest with open arms, we need to talk about exactly what we have here and most importantly, what we don't have. Version 72's recent update of adding Windows to the Quest is just adding a remote connection to a Windows machine. And that distinction is important because if you remember, we've always had a remote desktop app on Quest that you could hook up to either a Mac or a PC and see one screen on your Quest. All right, so I'm in front of my PC here. And so I, I wanna start off kind of pointing out something. I am logged into my PC. If I'm not logged into the PC, it's hard to get into this locked, but if I'm here and it's, it's live, I can just go and connect to the Windows app. And see, nearby PC is very important to point out here. So I wanna point out something here. You can see that we've actually started the remote desktop application. Now this application was always there. So the addition in version 72 is really the addition of adding this Windows app that's communicating directly to the Windows machine to give us this one button press connection right here and give us the ability to add multiple monitors as well. So let's take a look at what this looks like. If I had all of this running, just close some of that out, and I wanted to connect, there's this nice little button that appears right above your keyboard. It looks like there's some object recognition there. I did notice that it doesn't matter what keyboard this is, it just looks for a keyboard. So if I were to hold up any random keyboard, this would just float on top of it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect. And you can see here, the monitor in the background is off. So it's turned off the physical monitor in the room and gives you this monitor. I will say this is super sharp. I love how sharp this looks. That's one of the issues we've had up until this point with some of the desktop mirroring apps that we've seen along the way is that you just don't get a clear enough display to feel like you can actually do any work, especially if you're doing creative work or anything like that. So the true test here is how responsive does this feel, right? Like right now, it feels like I'm getting some kind of a glitch here where I'm not seeing my mouse pointer. So that's a little weird. And that happens from time to time. I'm just gonna open up Microsoft Edge here and go to apple.com. You know what, let's go to meta.com. But as you can see here, it's really, really snappy. I'm moving my mouse. You can see that it's very responsive to my controls and the display looks really good, right? So this is all you need to be able to use your machine. Now, if you're using something like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve or Photoshop, this would be a great way to do this. So what's the benefit now compared to the remote desktop app that we had in the past? The main benefit is the ability to add more than one monitor. So you can see this little gear down here. We can click that. We can choose whether or not the audio from this PC will come into the headset or not. I prefer to leave that on um, rather than using external speakers, but you can add additional displays. So when I add that, you even hear a little bit of a connection sound from the PC. So the PC is recognizing that you've plugged in another monitor. So the additional software is telling the PC all it needs to actually give you more than one monitor and more than one monitor, meaning you can slide things between them. So it's behaving in the same way as if you had more than one monitor on your machine. So it even can kind of bleed between both monitors there. It's a really good experience, right? So let, let's dig a little bit deeper here. I wanna show you what's happening in the computer that we're on. Let's go to device settings. So if you look at what's happening with this application, you'll see here, wherever my device monitor manager is, oh, it's all the way over there. You can see here now, we have a meta virtual monitor 
And you can see virtual desktop does the same thing. We'll talk about that in a second. Not sure what MR LDD device is. It could be mixed reality display. So you can see that we're adding additional monitors. As far as the PC is concerned, these might as well be physical monitors as well. So let's just add one more for a total of three. There we go. Immersive mode. This is a really nice addition. You can reach for your keyboard and it automatically just opens up a window for you to be able to see your keyboard whenever you need to touch it. I think that is a beautiful touch in version 72. You can't see your mouse, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Keep your mouse close enough to your keyboard. Maybe you can make sure you don't forget where it is, but it's nice. It does save battery life not to always use pass through. So if you can get your work done like this, it's all the better. One thing I will point out here is that this auto opening of this portal here does get in the way when you're trying to select things. So if my hand gets a little too close there, now I can't pinch and find what I'm looking for. I have to have the keyboard somewhat out of the way to be able to have my hand this low and pinch at the same time. I thought something was wrong with the update, but it's just that if you run into the keyboard a little bit, you lose your pointer. So that's kind of annoying, but you know, just have to work around it, right? So let's look at virtual desktop now, just to kind of compare and contrast. I'm going to close out of this. Let's close out of these windows. So I'm closing out of my PC now, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and open up Virtual Desktop. Now you've seen Virtual Desktop on this channel before. That's also kind of nice. If your computer's ready, you get a little thing to connect up here. Now this is if you aren't looking at your keyboard, you don't have the floating prompt right above your keyboard. It is here in the immersive mode, so nice job. But let's go over to Virtual Desktop. So Virtual Desktop does a very similar thing where we're looking at the PC that we have here and I could use the mouse that's connected to the PC and I could use the keyboard that's connected to the PC. So similar to the remote desktop option that we have now in version 72. And I also can add additional monitors. So if I want to go down here and add a monitor, it has some of the same functionality. I don't know where that monitor was added. Oh, it's all the way over there. I'm gonna add one more. Let's see where that was added. Oh, it's right here. So here we go. So I have three monitors. Um, I can resize these to whatever size I wish, something like that. And I could move this around, something like that. So you can do that here, just like we did with the Windows version 72 remote desktop. There's a key difference in virtual desktop here. The key difference is, is I can go into my Bluetooth settings and connect this keyboard and this mouse to my headset. Let me show you what that looks like. But the difference is, is that I can control this PC with this keyboard. So this input right here is happening through the Quest over to the PC. It's not going straight to the PC. I could essentially do this anywhere. So this is what I'll do. I'll leave this PC here. This is the one that we're connected to right now. And we'll head elsewhere. So I want to point out a few things here just for emphasis. So here I am in a immersive environment with my three windows and virtual desktop has um, several different environments you, you can pick from you know, movie theaters, bedrooms, you know, you name it, right? So I can see my PC just the same, but I want to point out that I'm nowhere near my PC and I can still use it. So I'm going to hop over here to pass through and I'm actually on my back porch. So now we have the MX Master and the Keycon K2 connected to this quest, right? So I'm far away, but I can still actually control this table is kind of dirty. <laughs> I can still control my mouse really, really far away from 
the PC. I have keyboard control. So the Quest is actually passing the peripherals over to virtual desktop and I can work far away from my desk. But also you can see, I actually have control over what's on the PC with my hands. You don't have this option inside the Windows app as of right now. So I can control anything I want. I can, you can see I can select on this screen as well. I can pull up Disney and drag it between monitors. All of that works, but it also works with the input I'm using from the Quest. But all of these options require you to still have some sort of PC connected to your Quest through some type of app or something like that. So mobility does become an issue even with virtual desktop because it runs the same way. It requires a running agent on the PC to connect to the Quest. So my favorite option to compute spatially without the need of a connected laptop or PC is actually using browser apps. So I wanna to talk to you about Fluid. You've seen it here on the channel before, but it's come a long way. Let's head back upstairs, I'll tell you about it. Fluid is a all browser-based productivity app, and it uses the keyboard and mouse just like the native OS does, which is really cool. You can tell there's a emphasis on productivity here where you can see that we have a mouse pointer, very clear, distinct mouse pointer. And one of the big standout features that I love about Fluid is the ability to still use your hand and move apps the usual way. Remember, I told you in the previous video, the best way to move apps quickly was to use the grab button instead of trying to find this bar at the bottom of different windows and drag it around. You could use the grab button and it would grab and move things around. One cool thing that Fluid is doing here is that it allows you to do that move with your hand. The stock OS doesn't do that. So check out this cool little maneuver here. So instead of doing this, where you're pinching the bottom bar, you can actually just grip your hand and move the windows around. It's so useful. So when I have a couple of things going, let's just open up some, some windows here. It's gonna open up um, a new tab, YouTube, Google. And this is a new addition of just stacking the windows so you, they don't go all over the place and you lose them. But let's move these around with my hand here. But you can see, yes, this is a browser app, but it is focused on productivity. So now we have both peripherals connected to this device. Move some of these extra mice out of the way. But you can see here, I'm actually able to use this pointer and I can resize windows in a more familiar way than having to use your fingers or pinching or anything like that. So I'm going to go here and add um, docs dot google.com and you get a fresh little icon here i believe that will update to show the icon i know they're still working on some of those but the point i want to bring up here is if you needed to do some work and you didn't have a particular device with you a windows laptop or mac you can get a lot done with a browser app so if i wanted to do some word processing or anything like that I could do it here in Fluid, right? So I could get some work done. I don't have my desktop applications or my laptop applications, that's true, but there's a lot to do here. You can get some Spotify going. Let's open that up. 
And then on top of that, Fluid actually allows you to have up to 11 windows open instead of just the six or so that the stock OS has. And this is more windows than you would be able to have open in the version 72 window support of only three windows, right? Because these are just browser windows. They're not actually separate PCs that we're looking at here. So Fluid also has environments as well, just like the stock OS. So you can enjoy doing your work in a nice living space like this one. I'm gonna move some of these windows out of the way so you can actually see how nice this is. But yeah, you can paste some of these windows up against the wall if you want it to take the place of a television. It's probably not the best one to put on the wall. Let's move that back. And let's put the YouTube on the wall, right? And you know what? Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So now we're able to have a working space that's nice and comfortable. I want to point out this here. So there is a there is a desk window. It doesn't have the auto hand thing going, but this is pretty neat. And you notice it's actually a quite a bit bigger so you can see things like your mouse or your quest controllers. So it's a little bit nicer. You can turn that off if you just don't like that. But this is a lot more space for you to have a few peripherals that you can see when you're looking at this. So I'm just gonna show you what this looks like over here. You can get, you know, a movie going. I'm going to go ahead and use that. But you can get a movie going over here and have some web browsing over here and maybe do some work right here. So you can see this is a really nice setup. And yes, it'll only be for web work, but it's a super cozy setup. It works in pass-through and without pass-through. I mean, Fluid has become so feature rich over the last few times we've talked about it, guys. It's just really fun to see how far it's come. All right, so don't get me wrong. This is fantastic. I love that we have the ability to use remote desktop on our Quest, but I just find it difficult to use something that ties me down to a machine. And when you compare this to the solution on the Apple Vision Pro, the connection between the Apple Vision Pro and say the MacBook was an independent Wi-Fi connection between those two devices. Version 72 requires you to be on the same network. The Quest and the PC have to be on a network. So there needs to be a router nearby to bridge that connection. The absence of being able to connect your Bluetooth keyboard and your Bluetooth mouse to the Quest itself keeps you tethered as well. So I have to be near the PC that's connected to these. Now I know when we saw this on Apple Vision Pro, it was mostly used for a laptop, right? So that laptop was most likely sitting right in front of you when you're using your headset. That's just not how I use things. I actually don't own a laptop, which is kind of funny. I own an iPad, but I don't have a laptop. So most of the utility for me is being able to just be anywhere in my home, especially when my wife is using this office, just to be able to put on my headset and immediately get to work on my PC. And right now I can do that with virtual desktop. But again, this is just the beginning guys. I am so happy that this feature is here on Horizon OS and maybe some of the things that we've heard about like Bluetooth connectivity are just around the corner. I would love to be able to interact with the windows inside of the Quest instead of having to use the peripherals. I think both of those things will come together, but I'm excited about this, guys. If this video was helpful at all, consider subscribing. We talk about everything VR and MR here, and we'll see you here next time in The Construct. Peace.